We've got a graph of a function. We're not shown it or anything. We're told that there's a coordinate on it. And then we're basically asked to apply some transformations. Okay, so we've just got to be able to notice the transformation. So f of x plus k is a translation in the y direction by k units. So when it's 3, we're going to be translating by 3 units in the y direction. Or in other words, although you never write this down, you're going to be moving the curve up by 3, which means that for our, our value is going to remain at 2, our x value, but then the y value is going to increase by 3. So we're going to get 2, 9. Part two is definitely uh, a step up, so it needs a little bit more, more care on it. So when I did it, I, wrote, I drew a little table down. So I did f of x was 2, 6. Okay, now I decided to uh, multiply the outside by 2 first, because that, that is a, trans, uh, it's a stretch in y. It's not going to affect the inside, which is going to be um, affect the x. One's a, a stretch in x and a translation in x. So I'm going to keep this at 2 and then I'm going to double to give 12. Right, now I'm going to apply the minus 1. So at 2 f of x minus 1. This is going to be a translation by 1 in the x direction. So actually it's going to become 3 12. And then finally, I'm going to replace x by 3x. This is a stretch by factor of third. This is the trickiest bit here. So what it's going to mean is that I divide my x value by 3, and it's going to be 1 and 12. That is my final answer. Now, the order does matter to what... Yeah, it's like you have to do a different um, transformation to get this. If you can't do a stretch by, let me show you actually. So let's say I'm at, this is an alternative way of doing it. So let's say that I decide to times by uh, 3x there. Then I'm going to get 2 thirds and 12. The thing is, if I then want to go to here, I actually wouldn't do a translation by one unit in the x direction because I have to replace x by x minus one. I'd get three x minus three. So I'd actually have to replace x by x minus one third at this point because I'd multiply the whole thing by three. And what that would mean is that I would translate by a third, which would get me back to one twelve. So um you know, sometimes this, this might have been discussed if you're doing lessons on this. Like you, you know, you need to think carefully about the order and understand how it how it matters. And if you want to get to the same point, you basically need to do different transformations. So basically, the ideal way is to do the translation first because that I'm affecting the I'm replacing x by x minus one, and then when I replace x by three x, the minus one is not affected. So it just kind of works out nicely. If I do my stretch first, which is which you can do just need to then be a lot more careful about your translation because now when I replace x by x minus 1 it wouldn't work. I have to instead replace by x minus a third. Um, in each case we do get to this 1 12 and we do get to this 2 f of 3x minus 1 function. Okay, Sorry I talked about that for quite a long time but it's, it's quite a subtle aspect of this topic, probably the most subtle aspect. Finally we've got this, um, we've got the inverse function so when you have like a function and you find the inverse, you actually have to reflect it in y equals x. And what happens is that your x, y coordinate, when it's reflected in y equals x, becomes the coordinate y, x. That's a very, well, that's a way of saying that actually we're going to get the answer 6, 2. Because they swap around. The x value of 2 becomes the y value, and the y value of 6 becomes the x value. On to b. Here we are given a graph of y equals g dash x, so the gradient function itself. Okay, yeah, it's a bit hard to get your head around when it's something like this. And we're told where it intersects the x-axis, and then we're asked for the x-axis of any stationary points. Okay, this is very important. Stationary points, don't forget, it's when g dash of x is equal to zero. 
So normally you're looking at where the where it's turning, where the function is turning. But because we are plotting g dash of x, it's where the uh, gradient function goes or, or touches, goes through or touches the x-axis. And so the answer is x equals minus 2 or 4. We're then asked to state the set of values for which y equals g of x is a decreasing function. So for this, we require, and again, let's write it in terms of g dash x. So here it was g dash x was equal to 0. For a decreasing function, g dash of x is less than 0. And I can look at my graph, and it's it's just here. It's not where the gradient, see, it's very important. It's not where the gradient is now negative, because we're plotting the actual gradient function. It's where the gradient function itself is below the x-axis. So the answer is going to be x is less than minus 2. This leads us to part three, which is only a one mark question, but is the one question that's annoyed me or frustrated me the most in the entire paper. And I'm going to try and explain why. So the quick answer to this question is that we're looking at the point of inflection. And so we could look at where the second derivative changes sign. Now, here's one place, because look, the gradient is negative here. The gradient of the gradient, that is. So here, uh, g double dash of x is less than 0. And here, it's greater than 0. And in between, it is equal to 0. So that makes it a point of inflection. So x equals 4 is an answer. Now the bit that trips me up is that there is another location where the second derivative is changing sign and it's here. So g dash of x is positive here and then negative here. The only difference now is that it is not defined at x equals 0. So I put x equals 0 as a solution. Now I understand why it might not be a point of inflection because we do not know if um, the function is defined at x equals 0. But we also do not know if it's, uh, if it's not defined at x equals 0. We just don't have enough information. So the mark scheme does not say this, but I believe the answer is x equals 4 and potentially, I'm just going to put this in, potentially x equals 0. Because one thing you need to be aware of is that the second derivative does not have to equal zero at a point of inflection. It just needs to change signs. It's very important. And I'm going to give an example of where it works. I'm going to look at this. And this function is not too complicated. The cube root function, x to the minus a third. So the cube function looks like this. When you do the cube root, the inverse, it's a reflection of y equals x, and it actually looks like that. And I'm going to be focusing on this point here. So let's say I, so the, so the function for sure is defined at x equals 0. dy by dx is then going to be a third x to the minus two thirds. Now immediately, the, second, the first derivative is not defined at x equals 0 because it's, I'm dividing by 0. Okay, so I couldn't, I couldn't draw that. If I find the second derivative, that it's also not going to be defined at x equals uh, 0, by the way, we're going to get minus 2 over 9, because I'm going to, I'm timesing, and then I'm going to minus, so yeah, this is the second derivative. But if we look at like x equals uh, minus 0 0.1 and x equals 0 0.1, we're going to see that the second derivative is actually changing sign. So let's call it y double dash for both. So minus 2 over 9.
So I'm looking just to the left and just to the right. Get minus 10 here. Minus 10.3. Sorry, didn't mean to do that. That's and here I get ten point three, no problem. And you can even you can see it from the diagram. The gradient is positive all the time, but the gradient here is increasing, which means that we get the second derivative as positive, which is exactly what I got here, and. Here, the gradient is decreasing, and momentarily, so that so if the gradient is decreasing, that means the second derivative is positive, so it's definitely changing sign. Okay, it's just that momentarily it's actually, well, infinite or not defined, so the first derivative is not defined. You can see it, because that, be, that would be your tangent at that point. So what I'm, what I'm giving an example of here is a function which is defined at all values of x, However, the first derivative is not defined at x equals 0. The second derivative is therefore not defined at x equals 0. However, the second derivative changes sign between, uh, well, at the point x equals 0. Um, and the function is defined at that point, so that would also be a point of inflection. So long story um, short, we don't know if x equals 0 is a point of inflection. I think that's why we need to reject it. But I feel like this question is a bit, it could be better worded because it says, it even says any points. And the fact of the matter is we do not know what the function looks like. We just have the derivative, which is not defined at x equals zero, but the function might be. And for sure, the function is going, um, the second derivative is changing sign between it. So I don't know. I'd be interested if I'm wrong here. But I've given a really strong case, and if you look on the internet, you know you see other case like the the cube root function definitely has a point of inflection x equals zero. So I believe that this one here could potentially have a point of inflection at x equals zero as well.